It's Holly's Hotspurs back with another one. Chatting all things Tottenham, we're second to none. Special guests every time, if it's win, lose or draw. The passion is high like Harry Kane when he scores. Or when Lloris makes a world-class save. We got Hoybier running the mid every game. Settle down, stick around, say your thoughts with the panel. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Coys. Hello and welcome to another episode of Holly Socks Fairs Live. Uh, my voice is slightly going and this is what happens when you go to two games in a week. But there we go. Happy days. Both were great results. Um, so with further ado, tonight we're going to be talking about the Burnley game. And in order to do so, I am joined by some lovely guests. First of all, Graham, thanks again for joining me on the channel. How are you this evening? I'm good, thank you. And uh, don't forget, it was two games and a night out. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hide that. Shush, Graham. Um, but no, thanks for joining me again, Graham. And also, Luke. Luke, how are you this evening as well, mate? Yeah, no, I'm I'm really, really well. Thank you very much for having me on again. Um, you know, I'll get the, the fangirling out of the way. It's a pleasure to be joined by Graham on the show. You know, just thought I'd get that bit out there. But, let, you know, let's move on from that. Holly, <laughs> um, burning the candle at both ends. What's happening? Oh, no, I need to stop going out. I'm getting too old for this stuff. But um, we should also be joined by Sam as well. So, Sam, if you're watching or you're about, um, jump on whenever <laughs> and I'll fizz you in. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, obviously, I'm going to talk a little bit about the North London Derby because I think it would be too hard not to. And, obviously, it was a cracking result. Um, and I want to come to you first, Graham, because, for me, it's, it's obviously the first North London Derby I've ever been to. But it felt like the new stadium was finally home. Yeah, like last year we um it was it was like two thousand people, wasn't it? And mm -hmm. uh, you know, so when this year you knew it was gonna be noisy, you knew it was gonna be a, a good atmosphere. It was amazing. And uh I think um it's got to be probably the best atmosphere I've seen at the new stadium and uh and what a night it ended up to be. Oh, 100%. It was class. And, and Luke, what was your kind of thoughts after the game? Because I know we have a lot of, uh, I say Arsenal friends. There's only a select few I would call friends, but there's a lot of Arsenal people that we kind of know. So how were you kind of feeling after, obviously, we won that game? Yeah, do you know what? I was probably as smug as I've as I've ever been. Like, we had a, we had a show, I think it was the night before the North London derby. And I said to, to Den, the guy on my channel, I said, uh, look, we're either going to see like the making of Mikel Arteta or we're going to see how incredibly naive of a manager he can be. And in my opinion, that's exactly what we got. You know, for them to try and attack us from the first whistle was the only way that they were going to lose the game, in my opinion. If they set up anything like Burnley, they may have got something out of the game. But I thought it was naive tactics from the manager and, and naive from some of the players. So just buzzing, to be honest. Just, yeah, it was amazing. It was great. And that's the thing, obviously, if they did come to our ground and win, obviously, we wouldn't be able to talk about tonight the top four talk, but we can. So that's, it's quite nice. And obviously, it also meant that we had to also discuss and get a win against Burnley and a win we did so. And I think the best way to obviously start it off is to talk about the lineup because, Graham, again, we saw that Kulevesky was put on the bench for the start and we saw Lucas come on. So what did you kind of make of Lucas's initial impact from that start? Of the well, I was there. I was there at 8.30 in the morning. And I was told that Kulevesky wasn't playing because he was ill. He'd been ill mm. all night. There was like four of them been ill. Uh, I think it was uh, Hugo. Hugo had an upset stomach. Uh, Winks. Um, one other. And Kulu. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they didn't really want to risk him. And then he'd blow out after 20, 30 minutes. And so... You know, they kept him for 20 minutes at the end and, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. It, we, I thought I thought the manager did the right thing. I'm a bit disappointed in Mora at the moment because early in the season when he was playing every game, his attitude was unbelievable. He was doing different things and he just, he just seemed to lost that little bit of, mm, I can't think of the word at the moment, but aggression and... Mm -hmm. and uh, commitment to the football team you know maybe he knows in the summer he might be going but you know you still play until the end of the season and get us in the champions league and you might be part of that yeah. but uh, no i thought we did you know, yesterday was a great great result for us i've got to say holly i'm i'm like you i am absolutely shattered 
I kicked every ball yesterday. I ran every bit blade of that grass. You was kicking, you was running, it was, and you felt you was in it. It, was, it just mm-hmm. drained you yesterday, you know, and Burnley come to do that bit. And uh, all right, we got a penalty. All the gooners today on radio were saying it wasn't a penalty. Um, but it was. It was the same, similar to Sizoko in the Champions League final. So can mm-hmm. we go back to the Champions League final then and say that wasn't a penalty and we'll play the next not 89 minutes, 30 seconds and see if we can win the Champions League. You know, it is what it is. It, by letter of law, it's a penalty and, and we've mm-hmm. got it. 100%. Uh, it, it, and obviously, we'll get on to the penalty as well. But I, I like what you said about Lucas because I've got Luke here, who is Lucas's probably biggest fan. Um, so he might enlighten us a bit to why maybe he thinks he hasn't played as well. But I thought, obviously, like you said, I think he grasped yesterday with a chance because I thought he was the only one at times that managed to find gaps in between the lines and drive at people because there's, there's a lot of players in this Spurs team that, that, that won't drive. And I thought Lucas, yesterday, Luke, kind of had that little bit of flair, like Graham was saying, maybe at the start of the season he had and then lost it. But I thought yesterday he kind of brought it back a little bit. Yeah, it's funny you said that, actually, because, uh, you know, I don't want to be known for the rest of my life as Lucas Moura's bigger, biggest fan, even though, funnily enough, I've got Lucas on the back of this shirt. But that's a different story. Um, do you know what, like, about him yesterday? And I don't want to, like, he, he, was, he was all right yesterday. Like, there were glimpses, you know, when he beat the... Mm-hmm beat the defender on the byline and, and a few things like that. But then you go back to, you know, his poor crossing in certain opportunities and also too many touches to try and get round players. The problem for Lucas is that when you play him against a team like Burnley, you don't really open up to his strengths. So his strengths are space, pace um, and that. And when, when they play with, a, you know, wing backs we can call them yesterday when I mean, it wasn't really wing backs was it it's more like a flat back five but um when when a team plays like that it's really difficult for him to then execute his best asset which has got to be his pace um yeah i think that you know for him to come into the game in kulu's absence he did an all right job um but yeah i think i felt like the first 20 minutes of that game we should have we should have seen the game off and and kind of cruised from there on in but we kind of made it hard work for ourselves. But look, Burnley, two games to go and fighting for the Champions League. What else do you expect from Spurs? Mm. And that's the thing. I think um, Conte said in the in the uh, post-match interview, saying something along the lines of, we would have lost a game like that a few months ago. And I think that is kind of true, Graham, because I know at times it was squeaky bum time because I was stressing yesterday. Like you've already said, it was exhausting to watch yeah. that game. I think I was more stressed watching that than I was the North London derby. And I think yeah. that kind of shows how far we've kind of come on with Conte. Yeah, and, and the good thing is I think the last three games has been clean sheets. Mm. So, you know, that is a good, good thing for us. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, we're quietly getting to what he wants us to be. You know, yes, we've got to upgrade a little bit if we get in the Champions League. Fingers crossed. If we get in... Um, and we'll, we'll be in Europe anyway, but if we can get that fourth place and he gets money to spend more money, then he can upgrade us and we'll be a force because he's making us into a hard team to beat. And, you know, we, we've beaten Liverpool, uh, we drew with Liverpool twice, we've beaten Man City. It's just the little games, the Brighton games, the Brentford games, you know, that we have to win. But no, no, he's, he's doing really, really well, the manager. And, uh, you know, yesterday I've got to be with you. I got home. I got home at six o'clock, and I was shattered. Right, <laughs> uh, it was, and that's the thing. Sam's here as well. Look, he's, he's joined. Hello, Sam. I'm really sorry. I'm that's sorry. Right. It's been a bit of a long day for me, but um, it, I'm just happy to be on this podcast again. Um, yeah. Good to see you as well, Graham Roberts. My dad's Thank a you. huge fan. Thank you. Um, Next no, time, no. to wake you up earlier. <laughs> Oh dear. But um, no, we are just talking obviously about the game yesterday, Sam, and I've just asked Graham about Conte and he said that after the game, um, if we played that game a few months ago, I don't think we would have come away with the win or played the, as well as we did. Is that kind of what you're Are you feeling that Conte's finally gelling this team together? I know we've got upgrades and things, but did you feel that yesterday, that that was a game that maybe a few months ago we wouldn't have necessarily won or, or got a point out of? Um, I think, well... I know that we benefited a lot with the penalty that was given to us, that's for sure. 
But I still felt, you know, if you compare the two teams together, we were definitely the better team on that game. We were very creative with our chances. It just so happened that Nick Pope was save made some very good saves that game, you know, especially punching Son's shot out. So, yes, we did get benefited by the penalty. But if you still take that away, I still felt like we definitely deserve to get something out of that, in my opinion. Yeah, and, that, and it is interesting you brought up Pope as well, because obviously there was moments, like you say, that Son shot. I was like, how on earth have you managed to save that? And I, I was thinking to myself, oh, no, they're, they're going to equalise and we've had this chance and he's done a worldie. But Luke, like I said, it, it kind of, if you're ready, Luke, sorry, mate, um, that it is that kind of thing that although we had some rough of the green at points, we still managed to defend well because we've swapped and changed this back four in the last couple of weeks because of the Romero because of um, obviously other players being unwell, like Kulivesky yesterday, it, it kind of shows that actually whoever we bring in now is up for the challenge. Yeah, definitely. No, I was ready. Just sounds like my laptop's going to take off in a minute. So uh, <laughs> didn't want to be drowning out everyone with that noise. But anyway, um, yeah. Do you know what? Like, I thought that Davidson Sanchez played pretty well in the North London derby. Like, for a game, I remember him against Arsenal when he gave away a penalty to Lacazette. And that's all I had visions of that when I heard the lineup. But um, yeah, I felt like he played well in the North London derby. I think, when was it? Yesterday. I forget what they were on. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> um, he played all right. He's still a bit suspect, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Let, like, in reality, like, he's not very he's terrible on the left as left centre back. We've seen that. He's pretty average on right centre back. And when you've got someone like uh, Emerson Royal, who, again, is slightly suspect defending. You need someone more solid, which is where Romero fits really nicely in there. Um, but, you know, it does show that, yeah, we can make a few changes and, and still win the game. But let's be honest, Burnley had their two biggest and best centre-backs missing, and we still only managed one goal. Um, but at, at this stage of the season, I, I really, really don't care about scoreline, anything else. All that mattered yesterday was a win. And look, I think Conte's right. You know, in, in the past, we would have um, probably thrown that away and it showed maturity especially in the last kind of 10 minutes when there was a lot of long balls and you know we maybe before we'd have tried to play the ball out of the back and lost it but instead we were just hoofing the ball away and just trying to get get the game gone so and it is interesting you said that because obviously you, you touched on the North London derby and I think that was the real not turning point for me but it was the point where I sat back and thought OK, these players now want this because they're putting their bodies on the line. And it is probably, apart from the odd maybe Dyer or Ben Tenker, um last-ditch block or Davies, for example, they were the only select few I saw. But against North, uh, against Arsenal, you saw that all the time. And I think, Graham, yesterday as well, there were at times where I was thinking to myself, all right, OK, I think these players have finally realised that top four could potentially be coming into our hands if we get this win today. Yeah, I think the Liverpool game turned it around. I think... Mm when you saw Ben Davis throwing his body in the way and other players and, you know, if we just think if we'd have beat them and we'd have got a point against Brighton, the top four would have been finished. Mm. Um, but, you know, we slipped up against Brighton, slipped up against Brentford and then we, we got a point which nobody expects us to get at Liverpool. But yesterday, listen, I've been there. I've done it all. It's, 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 yes, the nerves do you know, you're in the last five minutes. Oh, what do we do? Do we drop off and get deeper? And and they started pumping eyeballs in. And at the end of it, they, uh, you know, I don't, I think Laurie's the one that hit the post. I can't remember another save he had to make, really, a, a good save. Um, Harry missed a couple, didn't he? And, uh, you know, the, the one he missed in the first half when he got pulled back to him, I think that was the penalty, wasn't it? It was it because he missed it and he had his hands and his head in his mm. hands, and uh, then it went to VAR and he had ended up scoring. So no, I thought I've got to say I think the referees are the worst in the world. Our referees, uh, that's the reason yeah. they're not in the World Cup. That's the reason we don't take them. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You, you, you look at them and you think, for me, it's all about them. Mm. And yesterday. Kevin Friend, I don't know what he was doing. Um, Pope, how, how long? How many minutes did Pope wait? Oh. Larice does it twice, and he gets booked. Pope don't get booked. Mm. You know, if you've got a rule, do the rule. Um, but listen, we done we, we done what we had to do yesterday. 
now let's you know we'll watch it later but we put pressure on the others i won't even mention their name um <laughs> i don't like it um so um we we'll, we'll put pressure on them we got trippier playing up there he's he's one of us he knows what to do tonight and uh mm. we can celebrate after that well not really but we can because yeah. we got better goal difference so uh, let's fingers crossed and it'll happen but that's the thing we've kind of done our thing and obviously we've kind of spoken about it the way we managed to get those three points sam was obviously through that penalty i mean we could talk about how well how good harry kane is at penalties but i think as soon as you he knows that he's stepping up for that penalty you, you kind of know straight away it's going in the bottom of the corner isn't it really yeah i actually thought he missed it at first from where i was sitting because <laughs> it looked like it went um it went wide but then you could just see the ball bouncing back from inside the net it's never in doubt, really. It would have to be a very, very bad off day for Kane to miss a penalty. And, you know, don't quote me on this one, but I don't think he's missed one since the one against Liverpool. Liverpool. I believe. Liverpool yeah. Right. Now, as I was back in 2018. I think so. it's 21 consecutive penalties. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the last person to do that? No. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I scored, I Love scored that. 17 for another team not Tottenham Burst. Oh. And I know I never missed all season. I've got twenty four goals. I never missed. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I'm not telling you what to <laughs> keep that one a secret. <laughs> yeah. uh, should have been there for the Euro finals then. Yeah. You're right. I'm going tomorrow so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, but that. going back going back, you know, Harry Kane is Harry Kane, isn't he? Um mm. People say to me, oh, you know, Sonny deserved player of the year this year. But without Harry Kane, Sonny yeah. struggles. And, uh, you know, we're very lucky to have him. I keep saying, every show I go on, I keep saying, sign him or longer. Sign him. He, he, he's not going to go to Man City. He's not going to go. He don't want to go to Man United. He don't want to play in that conference again. So, uh, you know, let's... Let's sign him up and and then build the team around them too. A hundred percent. I think it's really interesting because I think I saw a picture on Twitter. I can't remember who made it, but there was a picture of him in May last year, and then there was a picture of him yesterday. And you can already see Luke the difference. I mean, with what's Graham saying and, and what's what Sam saying, it, it's kind of proven that I think he is here to stay. Especially with we'll see City going after Haaland and this, that, and the other. I think now with Conte, I think if we can keep Conte and give him what he wants. There's no question about the doubt that Kane will be staying too. Yeah, definitely. I think Graham's right with that. You know, like there's the the window, the very small window of opportunity, if there ever was one to go to Man City, is gone. And it was always going to go this summer because Harlan's release clause was this summer and that they were always going to sign him if, if it got to that. Um, you know, I think that everybody's heads get turned, right? In certain circumstances, certain times you know he's probably as frustrated with the board as as we are you know he can see from inside the mechanism do you know what i mean how how badly it's it is run up there and i think they have to at some point prove it to him you know and as graham said you know build a team around him and conte you know right now what we have in terms of management in terms of striking force you know in terms of goal scoring ability you know i still i still think sonny sonny wins the golden boot this year if that's the case you know he's incredibly underrated in terms of um you know how valuable he is to to any premier league club you know we everyone talks about mo salah luis diaz sadio mane at liverpool no one ever, no one ever really talks about him in son because he's just a just seems like a nice Look, there's not a bad bone in his body, is there? Um, but in terms of Harry Kane, yeah, I, before before this whole Haaland thing, I thought that the only way that Harry Kane would sign a new contract was if there was a release clause. Because, you know, that's one of the reasons why we couldn't get rid of him. Or he couldn't go, I shouldn't say couldn't get rid of him. Couldn't go in the summer. <laughs> I reword that one, Luke. <laughs> yeah, it was, because, uh, it was because, you know, Daniel Levy valued him way more than what any other club would, would value him at. Um, so I, I did think that he, the only way to sign a new contract was with a release clause, and I thought that was incredibly likely. Um, but you know, seeing how he's come on and seeing how much he's enjoying his football again, 
We just need it. Just need it to continue, don't we? And I don't see why he wouldn't sign a new contract now. You yeah. know, where else is he going to go? As Graham said, he's not going to go Man United. He's not going to go. I wouldn't think he'd go to somewhere well, like PSG. Well, Real Madrid can't afford him. Um, no. Barcelona can't afford him. No. So, would you go to Man United at the moment? No. 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 He wouldn't like, go Chelsea. You have to laugh. You, you laugh at people on Talk Sport and oh, Liverpool should go in for him. The people are just deluded, I think. Well, when was the last time Liverpool spent anything anywhere near Kane's valuation? Yeah. And don't like, don't get it right uh, wrong. Man, Man City offered £75 million pounds last year. Not £100 million, Not £110 million. And Pep came out and said, oh, Daniel Levy don't want to talk. Well, you're nowhere near what he wants, so why would he talk exactly. to him? Mm. Yeah. You know, so Harry Kane for me, I think now he wants to beat Jimmy Green's record. I think he wants to become an icon at the football club. Um, yes, we need we do need to win him a trophy. We need to yeah. win that trophy for him, and then everything will be be, be fantastic. But hmm. we've got to get that first trophy. One hundred percent. I think it's for us fans as well because I think that's the trouble. Sometimes we're deemed as very impatient in the way, obviously, the whole N account and things. But I think we have the right to be impatient when you've got the likes of Harry Kane, the likes of Sonny, and you're thinking we just need a few other players just to make it click, and we'll be yeah. there. But yeah, I mean, obviously, Kane scored it. Um, but Sam, as we know, there's a lot of people that say it shouldn't have been a penalty. It was soft. It was this. It was that. Or the other. But right. I know Graham's mentioned it. But it is the letter of the law, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah, I guess it is. But like um, Graham did say, you know, we do have one of the worst refs, mm. most inconsistent, and lack of logic really in some of the decisions they'll make for for a certain foul. And then when you have a foul that's very similar, or if not almost the same, it goes a different way. So do you know what, like? Sissoko gets a handball for a, a handball for somewhere where it hits literally this part of the body and that gets given a penalty. Well, do you know what? I just don't even want to hear anything more about the penalty rules. I mean, the only reason why I'm not obviously complaining too much is because that went our way. Um, but you just never, you, you just don't know anymore sometimes like what constitutes a penalty in regards of consistent rules, if I've got to be honest with you. Mm. And that's the thing. I, I, I think we can all agree that <laughs> our refs are very inconsistent and VAR can be very inc inconsistent at times. But yeah. look, look, I feel sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Because I know you mentioned prior to this, prior this stream that obviously we had one with Dyer. But it happens, unfortunately. I know it shouldn't happen, but it does. Yeah, on that, Holly, that... just did you what? I don't know if you watched the football when you got home yesterday, or you wouldn't hmm. if you were still in water. No, I was <laughs> still yeah. partying. But the Everton game. Okay, the centre forward, he had his. Well, I thought the other fella wanted to try the shirt on. He was pulling that hard. The referee, he's in front of the referee, he doesn't give that. 30 seconds later, the centre half at Everton's getting sent off. So there's no consistency with the VAR, with the referees. They. They what they're doing at the moment is they think the game's about them, and that's the wrong thing. It's about the players, and uh, it's about the fans watching them. But it, like for me, I've got I, we used to have some really really good referees. They were on the World Cup list, everything, and I I'm telling you now that this this lot are very very poor, very poor. Mm. And I think the problem is, I know we've spoken about it before, Graham, I think, but we said about having ex-pros being part of the VAR system, this, that and the other. But I also think it, it's just really, really annoying, Luke, because I know we've all kind of said it, it's the inconsistency of it all. But when you're seeing, like we said, one thing's given, one thing isn't, and then the other thing that really peed me off yesterday, it took so long for them to decide what was what. Uh, that's the thing well, that infuriates me as well. Yeah, do you know why? Because they were trying to decide if Son was offside. So, because I was at home watching it on, on BT Sport, they had pretty much made a decision on the handball, right? Because it was it was obvious. that Look, I'll go, sorry, I'll go back to that Sonny thing in a minute, but with the handball, right, it's, it is a letter of the law. With penalties, with VAR, with poor refereeing, like, 
as much as I dislike the quality of refereeing, I also I also hate this like moaning and whinging about decisions every single week and every single time. Like some teams just aren't good enough to win games, yet they all moan about this decision when against them. Like as you say, mm. sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. You know, I can think of probably ten off the top of my head Spurs instance where you know things have gone against us in the past two seasons. But look, these things happen, right? With the only like thing for Burnley I feel for them is that is that like that Davidson Sanchez flick it, it literally goes nowhere if his arm's not there like you know in reality it goes absolutely nowhere and it goes out for a goal kick or Pope gets it but as you say if it hits your hits your arm regardless of where the ball's going it was always going to be a penalty but yeah they spent a few minutes deliberating whether Son was offside and then they drew the lines to just make sure that Son wasn't offside before then saying to him to go to the monitor and change his mind but I agree with Graham. I saw the Everton game as well. And like Richarlison, I think it was, got his yeah, shirt ripped, ripped off his back. And uh, and as you say, nothing nothing happened. So I don't know. I, I kind of give up, but I just live in this life where look, things happen, whatever. Let's just I think on. I think personally the refs are relying on the VAR to mm. make decisions now. They think, well, I don't I'm not sure I saw that. I would play on. And VAR might pick it up, but the VAR can only pick it up if it's, yeah, if, you know, if it's a wrong decision or something. But it's it, listen, listen, it is what it is. All I'm saying is the referees in the summer they should get every go to every football club, two referees, and say this is the rule. Look at the look at the pulling in the in the penalty area for corners. Some of them don't even watch where the ball's coming. They're just they're just grabbing them and cuddling them, you know. Maybe we should put music on there and they can have a dance. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, in our in, in the, the old you couldn't you wasn't allowed to touch them. What you what you did in the old days, you just used to go and attack the ball. Now they're not even looking at the corner; they're just looking at the player but, and grabbing him. But that happens all over the pitch now, doesn't it? In terms of the way the game has gone compared to even ten years ago, right? The way the game has gone, it's so tactically minded from the players to win over officials in some way. You know, even I remember if we go back to North London derby, right? The, the Ben Davies yellow card against Saka. If you watch what happens, right? Ben Davies lunges in, fair enough. But if you watch what happens, Saka's leg is stayed so far back to try and get some. Do you know what I mean? Get some contact. That, that whole leg drag is it drives me insane. You know, at least 10, 15 years ago, the football was just played. And, and do you know what? That's why I kind of was glad at the start of the North London Derby because I said to, on my show, I said, if the officials don't let this game flow, don't let this game go and let some challenges come in, it's going to be a terrible spectacle to watch. And, and fair, you know, fair play. Uh, Rob Holding had about six or seven different chances yeah. before we finally got sent off. And I don't think anyone complained. No, uh, it is true. I think, like you said, it, it, it is very more tactical minded in a sense that you want to win over the refs or you're going to be tactical about it and you're going to be more concerned about that and getting one up a per against the person you're playing rather than playing the football and one up in them. And that's kind of where I want to move on to um, Cessignon because of late, I think he's done himself proud. I think he's really risen to the challenge of obviously slotting in while Reggie is injured. I'm assuming he's injured with his thigh still. Um, but I thought... With his confidence, uh, Sam, I feel like that's the thing that works for him. If he's confident, he plays well. But I noticed a few times against Burnley that, yes, he'd take on his man once and then he'd come back and his initial instinct is to play it back. I, I feel like once he gets over that confidence kind of step, it'd be even better. But that, that's been the whole issue with Ryan Sessegnon, really, and what us fans have, have been um, criticising about for quite a while now, that he doesn't take his man on. You know, but at the same time as well, like you said, he does get stuck in. And we even seen him um, been able to assist his players and even um, throw out a very good cross. You know, something that we don't really get from the right wing back. So I think definitely that the one thing that Sessignon has got to work on, which is still ongoing, is taking his man on. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the fact that he was playing against a fighting side like Burnley you know, very known to be a physical sort of team. Maybe that might have um, played on his confidence a bit, but 
he is step like you said as well with um regulon's injury if that's what it is he has definitely stepped up and yes he's definitely also earned himself uh, more time in a spurs shirt and um he just he's, he's just got to like like you said really take his man on and then we'd see a bigger improvement of Ryan Sessegnon. Hmm. Can I um, just as he, comes, sorry, as he gets older, he get better. Gareth yeah, how Bell, old is he actually? Gareth Bell, twenty one. Is he twenty one, twenty two? Yeah, a spell. As that, Gareth yeah. Bell, exactly the same. Gareth Bell never took anybody on. He, he was a left sided back, left back when he came. They moved him. Harry Redknapp moved him up to left wing. All of a sudden, totally different player, and that's what Ryan is. But Ryan's problem is he gets too many little injuries. Mm. And That's we exactly need to right. find that. Sorry? That's exactly right. Right. We need to find out why he picks up these little injuries. Because it seems to be a hamstring, a, a calf or whatever. And it's three, four, five weeks. So you're never getting a run with him. Right, we've got it now. We've got it. Maybe he knows it's summer and he don't want to be training in the summer. He wants to have a holiday, so he's not getting injured. Um, but <laughs> you know, but he is he's a talented player. I think he's better than Reggion. I think they might sell Reggion in the summer, and uh, I think he will be our left wing back next year for a definite. Yeah, because I was going to ask as well, like, I'll come to you, Luke, because obviously we're talking about obviously wanting to sort of grade the team. We don't want to get players in now that are obviously lower than the person we've already got because obviously we look at that right-hand side and that's pretty much what we've got. So with the kind of terms of Session, would you be looking at Session to be your main guy next year or would you look to upgrade that position and have Session as your kind of your backup? No, for me, I think, I think Graham's right. I think that, um, first of all, Ryan Session has been plagued with injuries ever since we signed him. We signed him when he was injured. And then one of Pochettino's like things was that the player the player had to kind of like work to build into the first team. You know, you saw it with Lucas Moura. He didn't automatically come straight into the first team. Saw it with Ryan Sessegnon after his injury. And he just plagued and plagued with injuries. Um, and I think that, you know, this is his longest run in a Spurs shirt ever, right? And I think he's coming on slowly and slowly. But I think that the left wing back's not somewhere I would even consider in the summer, to be completely honest. I think uh, like left-sided centre-back, um, you know, Ben Davis had a hell of a season, but I think we need a, a serious left-footed centre-back uh, to come in and shore up along with Dyer and Romero. And obviously, you know, in reality, your right wing back as well is somewhere that you could definitely look at, um, at least shipping out one of Doherty or, or Emerson. But... Um, yeah, with Ryan Sessegnon, I, I, I 100% think that, that he could be a, a star for Spurs. Um, you know, when, when Graham talked about um, Gareth Bale just then, I will always remember uh, the newspaper article when it's like uh, Spurs need to part with Gareth Bale to sign Stuart Downing or something like that. It was like some crazy yeah. article. When... Harry Redknapp, he was going to sell him, wasn't he? Yeah. He was gonna... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Madness. Um, what, what I don't really want to happen is um because we like all the we're listen, every fan base is divided when it comes to certain players, etc. But what I don't want to happen is if we do somehow, let's say, get top four, that I want us to then all of a sudden just become mellow and mm. sort of accept that this starting eleven is therefore good enough and we can have them for another season. Bearing in mind that, you know, you've got to look at the context of what this season was for us. And if I've, listen, if I've got to be honest, you know, Luke, you were saying uh, we need another centre-back. I personally think we need actually two new centre-backs. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but there is just a lot of adjustments that needs to be made. And, you know, if we're going to have this manager called Antonio Conte, then let's back him as a club and back his name of what he's done for football. Because, you know, a lot of these players have let us down majority this season. And now it only just so happens at the end of it, we're, we've got, we might have that slim chance of getting top four. Okay, a bit more than slim, but you know what I mean. Mm. No, it is interesting you said it because it's happened in the past. Like you say, we get to that step and then we're like, oh, it's all right. These players did it for us anyway. We, we don't need to upgrade. But no, I, yeah. 
I think with me, the only thing that is making me feel a bit happy at the sense that we will do the business is because we have that man, Antonio Conte. He'll know the problems and he'll know what he needs to fix. And before I like move on, I just want to say a big thank you to Joseph coming in with a super chat. Um, he's bigging everyone up. Um, and he's also saying that VAR isn't the problem. It's the poor officials. And that obviously we want to see um, Newcastle win tonight, which would be fabulous. Um, like I said, it would help us out massively. But sticking with kind of the, the idea of, of the wing backs, I mean, I need to come to Everton because I haven't been his biggest fan all season. And I think there's been a lot of us that haven't either. Um, and I know that we need better than Emerson, but Graham, I'm going to give a little bit credit where credit is due because yep. I think it was great in the North London derby. And again, yesterday, there was times when I was thinking, oh my, you need to time this challenge well. And he did. And it wasn't or it wasn't that fear of, oh my Lord, he's going to he's gonna do something stupid here. He's actually calm and collected, which you don't normally see from Emerson. So I kind of get your thoughts on uh, Emerson, Graham. Well, it, let's go back a couple of years. And we had a lad called Aurea who used to give penalties away, fouls, you know, the, the cup final he played in. And, and, you know, you, you're thinking, we haven't got that now. This lad, all right, he's not, he never, it's like any, when, when a new player joins a football club, it's very hard for the first season, season and a half. Very hard for him. Um, so you have to give him a little bit of leeway. But he's, to be fair to him, the last three, four, five games, he's he's turned up, he's put his body on the line. Um, you know, that's a difficult position to play, the right wing back and left wing back. You know, you've got to cover the whole pitch and you've got to be fit. And, uh, you know, for me, I've got to give him credit. I, I didn't think he would be able to do it, but I've got to give him credit now and... Uh, for me, he's been, you know, the last two or three games, he's been very, very good. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes, I agree with both the boys, uh, Sam and Luke, that we, I think we need two centre-halves for definite. I think Eric Dyer played brilliant this last four weeks, five weeks, but he still gives chances. You know, I watch, me, I'm, as being as a defender, I watch when teams get a corner... Eric Dyer doesn't pick up anybody. And I'm thinking if you're a leader and you're you're the person that's holding the other two, you know, go and attack the ball. Be be a you know, don't don't let Reggie on or or um, Emerson and all those fullbacks, Sessignon, they're picking up big lads. And he's so for me he needs to bring that into his game. I think he's a brilliant player, but you know, he needs to do more. He, need, he needs to become the best in that suite. You've got Romero. Romero picks up injuries. So you really need four or five. And we've got, I think we'll keep Ben Davis. So we need another two centre half so we can rotate a little bit like Liverpool do. But they've got to be better than what we've got. If they're better than what we got, we know what we got. We can put them in and the other two can be uh, standbys. So, yeah, we need two centre-halves for definite before we do anything else. Hmm. There's a lot of work to be done, and I think we all kind of know that as well. And it's the thing, I know we've got the centre-backs, and they are really important. Like you said, Romero's class, but he picks up injuries. Dyer, like you said, is he really that leader that we need? He's done well this season. Um, but again, we know that he can make a bit of a slip-up. But Emerson, so I'll just go back to him quickly. Like we said, he's done well the last couple of games. But it's it's the crosses, it's the, it's the end product, yeah. and when you've got a Conte system like this that relies heavily on the creativity yeah. from your wing backs, you can't be having Emerson not being able to cross the ball, can you, Sam? Yeah, um, I've, look, um, I like what Emerson's done in the last couple of weeks, and he's shown himself as well to be, you know, a good vibe for the team. But you know, we're we're a football club; we're not here for good vibes or. Uh, good people, etc. You know, God, I'm quite a Mourinho now, but you get what I'm <laughs> saying. Um, I think that, especially with Conte system, we do depend a lot on um, on crosses. And if you're going to be a right wing back, which, to be fair, Emerson isn't. He was always a right back from you know his previous um, clubs playing football. Um, then he's not gonna he's not gonna survive in a back five system. You know, a, a season doesn't last a few weeks. It lasts, you know months and 
you you got to do more than just retain possession from the back and um yeah the cross uh, the one cross he did in front uh against burnley the other day um i think this was in the second half it was it was a painful cross to watch and that's just me thinking right well next season we better have someone who knows how to cross the ball ryan sesson you know, fine he can cross he's got issues taking his man on but as long as a, he's playing as a wing back which is getting forward and making those crosses then that's fine but emerson doesn't make those crosses uh often he actually hesitates and would rather someone else make that yes. cross and he'll just hang back just in case you know he'll cross it into the box away from like nearer to the corner flag let's say so you know the fact that emerson doesn't cross the ball is just it's just the worrying factor and mm. why i think that we definitely got to upgrade in that position and you know conte back five you got to have crosses mm. 100 so, i think that let me oh, just sorry. say something oh, there. let me just sorry darling that's all right we need to we need to upgrade defensively because we've got the best strike force. We've got Kulicheski when he's he's unbelievable. We have two midfield players who are running the show at the moment. So we have to get the back five right. If we do that, we're going to be very hard to beat. Hmm. And we got when you're very hard to beat, you know you're going to score goals because we got the goal scorers. Yes, bring another striker in. I agree with that. But get your defence sorted out first. Your wing backs, your two centre halves. We've got people in midfield. We don't need anybody else in there. You know, you've got Bentecure, you've got Oiberg. They've been brilliant the last three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. You know, so let's, you have to build at the back, keep it solid. Look at, that's what Liverpool do. That's what, you know, Man City, they buy a, 60 million pounds center off and he don't play you know that's that's what you have to do though you have to do that and you do that properly then we're going to be a force we're going to be a force 100 uh, i like the way you say we work from the back because obviously our wing backs it and I, and you talk about uh obviously hoiberg and ben Tinker. obviously it's hoiberg's was 100 appearance the other day um and it is interesting because there's lots of people saying we need a creative mid but once we've got those wing backs sorted, Luke. That's where our creativity is. So we won't necessarily need someone that can ping a ball in between the lines because we've got those people out on the wing. Yeah, it just reminds me of like everyone saying that we need another Christian Eriksen, and then you see the next minute everyone's replacing Christian Eriksen with Christian Eriksen. Do you know what I mean? Like as a club, we really need to look beyond things of the past. You know, I thought that we did really well by getting rid of. Aurier cancelling his contract. Got rid of Sissoko, pretty cheap. Got rid of Deli Ali on a very, very cheap deal. I think that we are slowly, and I'm going to say say that word again, slowly, because this summer will certainly tell. Um, I I honestly believe that this, if Daniel Levy doesn't do something and doesn't seriously understand how to turn a football club from a mediocre football club into a, you know, a force, as Graham has said, then he has to stand down if, if, if he can't, if he can't do it now, because, you know, in terms of Emerson, I would probably rather sell Matt Doherty at the moment, because as Graham said, again, like you, you don't just give someone one season and then say, oh, well, they're not really working out and then move them on. You know, I think Doherty's had uh, enough chances, in my opinion. But, it's yeah, it's really important for us. Like, look at how well we defended with that back four of Sessegnon, Davis, Dyer, Romero and uh, Emerson against Liverpool. Yeah. Like, how well we defended that game. And, you know, if it wasn't for a deflected shot, we'd have won the game. If it was for Hoiberg being able to score ahead of them, we'd have probably won the game. Anyway, <laughs> but, so I think it's really, really important that we definitely do that. And I think, look, even in midfield, Bendecourt, Hoiberg, Skip. Um, there's some some real talent in midfield, and uh, yeah, again in, in the front three, it's uh, it's just as good. I think that what as well the board have to see is the work that we did in January. Yeah, right. Those signings that we signed in January, the deals that we got on them, you have to give respect to whoever or- orchestrated those deals because the Kulusevski deal is absolutely incredible if you look at it financially. 
you know, for Daniel Levy, he must be licking his lips at that deal because I think <laughs> yeah. it's a uh, like thirty-five million paid over five years, but it's an initial eighteen-month loan. You know, I think it's outstanding business. And if you look at that's what we can do with a very short time of having Conte and a very short time of having a January transfer window. Imagine the business that they could do in the summer. And so I think it it's it's definitely crunch time now. A hundred percent. And talking about crunch time. There's been a person that's come late into the game in both the North London derby and Burnley, and that is Joe Roden, Sam. Now, do you think this is a play by the board to sh- to put him in the, the window, shall we say, for the summer? Or do you think that Conte is finally seeing something? Because it's, it's not just Conte that hasn't seen something in him for a little while. It, wasn't new, it was also um, Jose as well. Do you think this is Joe Roden having his time, or do you think it's purely to ship him off in the summer? I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh... I kind of think he might get shipped in the summer, uh, considering that centre-backs are a priority at the moment in this team as well to sort out. So I, I really I really don't know, to be honest. Uh, when Joe Roden came on, I was like, oh, God, he's playing. I almost forgot about this guy. You know, no, dis- no and, and there's nothing disrespectful about him in any shape or form. He just hasn't been playing wow. uh, in a starting 11 or coming on from the bench, rather, sorry, in ages. Um, I don't know. Swansea fans always big him up and said that he you, that he's a proper talent and they miss him a lot. Um, us Spurs fans are saying, well, hasn't really had enough chances, so don't really know what to make out of him. Um, I, I, I really don't know. If if he goes, he goes. If he stays, then obviously it's a prospect centre back, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, just, just like you said, that, sorry, go on. Just, sorry, sorry, go on. I keep. <laughs> But Joe Roden, he's, he's a talent because he plays for Wales. He's a talent. But he needs maybe two more years at Tottenham learning from the likes of Romero, Dyer, Ben Davies. And what the vibes coming out of the training ground is he works very, very hard in training. And that's why the manager has given him these last two games. Um, maybe it is to put him in the shop window. Um, you know, there will be clubs that are buying. him. There's no doubt. Maybe Crystal Palace or, or, or clubs like that. Um, but, you know, we if we're going to keep him, he needs to learn because he does get caught. When he was early on in his career at Tottenham, he was getting too slow with the ball. He was He thought he was a football player. And when he was at Swansea, he was a defender. Maybe he got that that in, muddled up when he came to Tottenham. Oh, I've got to be a footballer here. Yeah. No, you have to be a defender. That's what mm. we bought you for. And maybe that's that's why he's he's been in that middle part. You know, he hasn't played. I I you know, but he is a talent. But I think if we're going to bring two in, then he won't be a part of it. He'll be gone. Yeah, uh, and, and, I, I, and I that's, think that's where we, I think Sanchez may be a go as well. So. Mm. And I was just really surprised to be like, oh, like like Sam says, I, I, Rodan, like he's, he's here. Um, but Luke, are you kind of on that vibe as well? Like it's got to be something in the track. I know Graham said that he is working hard in the training ground, but for certain managers to sit there and say, you're not playing because, yes, you play for Wales, but I'm not seeing it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is because he's young or he's, he's adapting to Tottenham. I don't know. Yeah, I think with the reason he's come on and played, Graham might be right, you know, in, in terms of, well, he probably is right in terms of what's coming out of the training ground. But um, in terms of the reason, why, <laughs> <laughs> the reason why he's played, I think is relatively simple, right? We've only got one fit left wing back right now. We're at the real crunch time in the in the season. I think in the North London derby, um, unless I'm going insane, he was brought on for Ben Davis. Or was that the other day? And then, and at one point he was brought on for Ben Davis, and the other time he was brought on for Sessegnon. Well, I think he came on yesterday, and Emerson went off, and Sessegnon went right, right wing back. Yeah, uh, so I think it's about man management at this time in the in the season. Look, I look at Spurs where I think that we're that all we all we talk about right is improving and pushing on as a club. If we want to win the FA Cup next season. If we want to try and challenge for the latter stage of the Champions League, because we'll get there. If we want to win the Premier League over the next five seasons, 
do I see Joe Rodon's name on the team sheet and the title decider? And that answers your question. In my opinion, the way the club should go. Do I see his name there? No. So um, no, I think you're right, Graham. I think it might, for me, if we're bringing two centre-backs, I think Joe Rodon needs to go. And I think that think... Sanchez needs yeah, to go. Yeah. Um, I think we need to continue to be ruthless. You know, maybe he ends up at Crystal Palace or Brighton or, you know, or somewhere mid-table Premier League team. He's a good footballer. You know, when he came on yesterday, he made the, the biggest thing I saw from him was he made a really strong, powerful header to clear the ball. Do you and know why afraid... they brought him on yesterday? No. They, they've just started pumping balls in the area and he's good in the air. Yeah. So they brought him on to attack the ball and, and be strong. You know, yeah. we never used to do that. But Conte thinks, right, we take Emerson on, off, he's not a good header of the ball. And we'll put Joe Rodin on and move move the two wing backs. And, yeah. You know, that's good management. But, you know, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. For me, I think he needs to move on and 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 up up himself to so yeah. he plays every week. Yeah, yeah. look, and, and to talk about Eric Dyer quickly, because we talked about him earlier. I'm not Eric Dyer's biggest fan, but I think the one thing that I do like about him, especially in the way that a lot of teams, especially when you look at Man City, even Liverpool to some degree, they always have one centre back that comes out with the ball. As a player yeah. who played defensive midfield before he then played right back, before he now plays centre back. That's that's a good thing with, with Dai. You do see him push out with the ball when he sees that space. And I think that's what I do like about him at centre-back. But again, if we're going to win the league, do I see Eric Dyer name on that team sheet? Probably not either. So, mm, no. it, Yeah, I get it. I think I just thought for me it was quite interesting to see Rodon floating about um, for obviously yeah. those two games. Um, but moving on, obviously, quickly, we do have obviously Norwich next. We know them lot are playing tonight. Um, I feel like for us, all we can do... Sam, is get that win and just concentrate on us at this moment in time. Yeah, I've got to get that win. I mean, if they beat Newcastle, then it's going to be a matter of um, listening to the fans. You know, fans will be on their phones the whole time to, the, to those are going to the game. If there's any signal that is, you know, updates of <laughs> what's happening. It will be a, it will be quite a dramatic last game of the season um, for not just the top four, but you know, potentially relegation battles too, who stays and who goes. Um, but you only you can only beat what's in front of you and any other teams that are playing, that's that's not on your mind right now. You can only focus on your game. But, you know, I just really don't want it to get to that stage. But what can you do, eh? I oh, know. The stress continues. Um, but like Sam said, Graham, we only can play the team that's in front of us. And obviously Norwich being Norwich, I feel like we have got a... I would like to say I feel confident against it, but obviously being a Spurs fan, you can't always feel confident. But with Norwich, you think to yourself, that's, that's three points, surely. Well, it's, it's, it's the <laughs> end of the season. You've got to go there and you've got to play play well. You've got to play well. Um, you know, what we don't want, is, you know what's going to happen. They're going to lose. They're going to draw or lose tonight. We'll be in front of them. All the pressure, they're... All the press and all the TV, everybody will put the pressure on the boys. So for me, they got to turn every TV off till the weekend. Go out and uh, play. Our, if we play our game, we we'll get we we'll get the points. Hmm. You know. But yesterday, they're going. Norwich are a bit different. Norwich like to play football, so they give you a chance. Um, I'm quietly confident that. Yes, we'll get three points. Um, tonight is a big game. It's a big game because Wednesday night, I think Everton, or Thursday night, Everton play Palace. So we need, really, we need Palace to beat Everton. <laughs> so that they need to go to Arsenal and put a, put a show on. Mm -hmm. um, but if Everton win, then they're safe and they've got nothing to play for when they go there. So... You know, it does change the whole structure of the ups and downs Thursday night. And that's the thing. As much as I'm like the excitement of it all, it, it could potentially come down to the last day of the season. You never want to be the team that it comes down to, do you, Luke? No, definitely not. But I think we need to look because I, do you know what? Like, I don't know. I think like the way that us fans are. Right. And how like we go, oh, we've got to go to Norwich on the last day of the season should be an easy win. 
oh, but it's Tottenham. Like the 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 whole that whole mentality needs to change through the players, through the fans, you know, and to go in and and say we've got Norwich on the last game of the season. They're already on holiday. They're already thinking about what they're going to do in the championship next season. And I think Graham's right again. Like in reality, Norwich play a completely different game to Burnley. Um, they will be space. They don't score many at all. So I think it should be relatively straightforward. Um, you know what I'm like? I'm a beacon of confidence at all times. You know, Good. At, you know, at the start of the season on my show, I said we'd finish fourth in the Premier League, um, even under Nuno, or how wrong I probably was then. But, um, you know, even how long ago was I on here with, with Tanya Holly? And I said, you know, we will still finish fourth in the Premier League. All you've got to do is have that confidence that yeah. that, that will happen. And, and look, you know, I think when we go back to the other team's games and they put on that, that run of form, it's the lesser teams they struggle against. And I seriously think they'll drop points tonight. I don't think they'll lose, but I think it could be a draw tonight. And uh, I think the Norwich game will be relatively straightforward and, you know, we'll all be celebrating from the end of the season. I so hope so, honestly. Um, but Sam, I kind of get your final thoughts on it. Obviously, these guys have said that Norwich will, will play differently to Burnley. And I think we can kind of all agree on that. I mean, Burnley like to sit back. I think Norwich at home will want to put a show on for their fans. So for us, I feel like that's good because we can exploit the, the obviously the gaps in behind. Look, like <laughs> you said, um, being a Spurs fan, you know, and especially for someone like me, I just, I never like to get, carried away or think into something that hasn't even happened yet and you know i'm still haunted to the day of losing 5-1 to newcastle to a team that was already relegated all i'm saying is is that yeah like like graham rob said um we play our game you know then of course we can definitely um beat norwich but right now it's just got a i'm just gonna wait and see what happens between newcastle and arsenal obviously of course whatever happens regardless i want us to be beating norwich obviously um this is the, the script has to be written by other people as well, and it's, it just so happens to be between Newcastle and Arsenal. Um, think like, five, yeah, we play our game though. That, hmm? Think five one. I was there that day. It was, oh, it was no. agony. It was agony. Trust me. Exactly, and you don't forget this agony. So <laughs> I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to feel pain after feeling, you know, positivity. So I'm just going to sit down and just take it in as it is. And Come what, on, the what, jaw. wherever we finish Come in the, the table. Jaw. Yeah, up the Geordies. You know, we've got we got Kieran Trippy and we've had other people like Ginola and um Gas and Gaza too. So, you know, I, I don't ever remember Newcastle doing us any favours in the past, but come on, please do us a favour. That's all I'm asking. One hundred percent. And that's the normally I'd ask for a score prediction, but you know what? I'm not gonna do that this week because I'm like you said, I'm just gonna let it let it play out how it works. Like I said, we, we all think we're gonna get those three points. Hopefully, Newcastle do us a massive favour tonight. Um, and it is happy days. But like I say, I want to say a big thank you to you guys for joining me tonight to dissect everything that obviously went in on the yeah. Burnley game and to relive a little bit of obviously that atmosphere from the North London derby. But we'll go around the table. So, Graham, thank you so much again for thank joining you. me this Pleasure. evening. Pleasure. Love. And Sam, you only done half the show. All right. <laughs> So it's just three and a half shows I've now done with um, Holly on um, Holly's podcast. So I will oh, improve players, my punctuality. <laughs> oh dear! But no, thank you so anyway, much, lovely, Dad. Lovely to see you all. Lovely to see you. Right, it was class, you. and it is actually the fiftieth show of Holly Sorts Fairs Live as well. So thank right. you uh, for for coming on, and and Luke as well. Where can everybody find you doing your thing? Yeah, look, Holly, want to say a big thanks to you as always. Um, Honestly, you put so much effort into this show and it's always really, really good. So thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, so if you aren't subscribed to Holly's channel, make sure you do. Make sure you buy our memberships, all the rest of it. Uh, good stuff. Uh, once you're done with that, come over to my channel. Um, look, if you like if you like talking Spurs, let's talk about Spurs with an Arsenal fan. Um, I do a new show on my channel called The North London Lowdown um, with myself and uh, Dave. And we've got some Arsenal fans on and it's just just good fun, good football talk. And yeah, if you like it, just come subscribe. If you don't, don't bother. <laughs> I love that, Luke. Uh, to be honest, you're a saint the way you like put up with Den, honestly. I don't <laughs> understand it. Um, and Sam, uh, I mean, Graham's already given a slight dig that you're a little bit late, but it's fine. It's chill. Uh, where can everybody find you doing your thing? 
Uh, yeah. Also, just like what Luke said, this is a brilliant podcast and always enjoy going on, which is why I do feel guilty. And I understand <laughs> that you're a teacher yourself. So, you know, please don't give me that uh, detention for being late, <laughs> etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, you can find me on um, my YouTube channel, Sam Chipek. Um, I'm back to uploading. I've actually just recently hit 17K subscribers, which I'm very happy about. And uh, yeah, I do Spurs content and also ground hopping content with a series called Through the Turnstiles. And uh, I've got a lot more exciting content coming up in the summer. Uh, one that's happening tomorrow, funnily enough. So um, yeah, just find me there, Sam Chipek on YouTube. Love that, love that. And again, like I say, thank you all for all three of you for coming on. I'd also want to say a big thank you to you guys in the chat as well. Um, I do, I do appreciate you coming over to watch it, and obviously to Joseph as well tonight that uh, gave the super chat. I do really appreciate it. Um, like I say, I'll let you all get on because obviously we want to see this this Newcastle game. Hopefully, a lovely win for those boys. Um, but until next time, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>